If you haven't viewed the physics part one video and looked at the physics part one notes on my website, you should probably do that before you watch this video. This is physics part two. The notes and example questions that accompany it can be found at goprocaribbean.com slash dive dash physics dash two. If you watch the videos from that page, you're going to be watching them in the order they're intended to be watched in along with the notes and questions and it'll probably make a lot more sense to you and you'll benefit a lot more from doing it that way. So now we're moving on to looking at questions that are a little bit more tricky. What if the question is not a comparison with the surface but with another depth? Well fear not, all we need to do is use the three-step process twice. We go from the first depth up to the surface, and then we go from the surface down to the second depth. Uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do, uh, but before we do that, let's just review what you know. So if we have uh, the surface and then 10 meters and 20 meters drawn up, and we imagine what happens to different things when they move around. A balloon taken from the surface to 20 meters. Hopefully by now you know it's gonna get smaller. Also, you know that uh, divers are gonna be affected in different ways as they descend. What are some of the ways that a diver may be affected as they descend from the surface down to say a depth of 20 meters? Well, one of the things that's going to happen is that the air that diver breathes will actually be denser. What impact does that have on the diver? Well, it means they're going to breathe through their air faster uh, at depth than they would at the surface. Their air will last them less time. And also, that means that they will breathe through more PSI per minute or more bar per minute with every breath they take. So now let's think about how we could use the three-step process twice to answer a question where the object is being taken from one depth to another depth. For example, a balloon at 20 meters being taken to a depth of 10 meters. This is a question that you may well be asked in the exam. You know, hopefully, that that balloon is going to get bigger the question is, how much bigger? Well, we'll use the three-step process twice. Let's take our balloon uh, with a known volume at 20 meters and use the three-step process to work out what its volume would be at the surface. That's easy to do. You learned that in physics part one. We can then take that known volume at the surface and calculate what its volume would be at the second depth given to us in the question. All we need to do is use the three-step process a second time and we found our answer. Let's think about the divers. Well, it might be a question about how much air they're consuming in minutes, how much air they're consuming in bar, or the density of the air as they go from one depth to another depth. All we need to do is use the three-step process twice. We calculate how much air they would be breathing at the surface using one three-step process, and then we calculate how much air they would be breathing at the second depth by using a second three-step process to take our answer on the surface down to a second depth. So, three-step process twice, something you're already familiar with, and that's how you do questions at two different depths. We're now going to look at a few example questions to help you better understand what, how that works. For more videos, notes, practice questions, go to goprocaribbean.com. I'm going to be releasing exclusive material to people who like my Facebook page. And if you want to see when my videos are published, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my YouTube channel.